dawn breaks in the Middle East, HMS Birmingham cuts through troubled waters. There's a ceasefire in the Persian Gulf, but peace, even in the season of goodwill, can easily be shattered. British warships like Birmingham began patrolling the southern Gulf soon after the outbreak of the Iran-Iraq war nearly 10 years ago. In recent years, international shipping has come under missile attack, resulting in tankers like the Maersk Navigator being escorted through the war zone. The Navy insists it stopped accompanying merchant ships following the August ceasefire, but to the observer, it appears little has changed. Maersk Navigator, this is warship Birmingham, mother. He's not a very big one, is he? Not big enough. Okay. Good luck. Okay. I don't think she's worried at all. She just likes to think that there are, there is a, a warship around that is looking after her interests. But what action would you take if a merchant ship that you're accompanying is attacked? Well, first of all, it's very unlikely in the present circumstances, but we do have procedures which would allow us to look after the ship and provide the assistance you'd expect us to. What does that mean? Well, uh, you, you can uh, imagine that uh, if a merchant ship called for our assistance and we were there on hand, uh, we're well equipped to provide uh, not just reassurance, but material support. HMS Birmingham is ready to fight with formidable weaponry. She's equipped with guided sea dart missiles. These can destroy a fighter plane 30 miles away. Ministry of Defense film shows the supersonic missiles being test fired. Lessons were learned at great cost during the Falklands War. Talent's guns were fitted to destroyers following the Exocet missile attacks on HMS Sheffield and Coventry. These rapid-fire guns are the ship's last line of defense. For four months, guns have been silent in the Persian Gulf, but the calm is uneasy. Sightings of other warships, like the Soviet patrol boat escorting a Russian tanker, are a clear indication of global fears that oil supplies would be the first casualty if the ceasefire ended. The two ships pass in silence. East meets West with a common cause, to ensure oil reaches the petrol pumps at home. They observe each other. The passing is captured on film. For many of the 300 men on board Birmingham, this rare sighting is a break from tedious routine. The only enemy they're fighting in the Gulf is boredom. The routines is, are all the same. Uh, they don't change. Uh, we have to adapt to them. Occasionally, something uh, unusual will happen, i.e. the incident we had this morning with the boats. That was a bit different. Though the days go quite quickly, they don't seem to amount to anything. You know, you seem to have a 12-day week. The calendar seem, just seems to go very slowly. You know, and uh, you need to keep your pecker up, really. You know, you've got to have something aside from just work to keep yourself going. The Lynx helicopter is the eyes of Birmingham, spotting small boats the ship's radar can't detect. On a routine patrol, the flight crew see a fishing boat in distress. What's been going on here? Well, the helicopter was doing a surface search a few minutes ago, and he came across uh, this little boat that you can see behind us here, uh, suffering from some sort of engine trouble. So we've sent our boat over with some engineers and some petrol. You ran they, out of they, petrol? They'd run out of petrol. In the whole of the Persian Gulf, stuffed full of oil, they'd run out of petrol. tons of military steel cutting through the Strait of Hormuz. Another rendezvous with a merchant ship, this time the British tanker Mobile Petrol. A quarter of a million tons of tanker bound for Kuwait and protected by the oldest destroyer of its type in the British Navy. But HMS Birmingham, known as the Brum, hasn't always been a destroyer. May 1913, the first warship to be named Birmingham is launched on the Clyde. The light cruiser attained fame days after the outbreak of the First World War when she became the first British warship to sink a German submarine. Six years after being sold for scrap, the second HMS Birmingham was commissioned in Portsmouth. The Lord Mayor of Birmingham, Councillor Canning, travelled down with the Lady Mayoress to make a gift of drums and bugles to HMS Birmingham. In making the presentation for the city, the Lord Mayor expressed a hope that we all echo. 
that tomorrow when this cruiser goes to the Far East, it will be a happy ship and let us hope be one of the means of maintaining peace throughout the world. But disaster struck in 1943 when she was torpedoed by a German U-boat. 29 men were killed. It'll be at least 10 years before the present Birmingham is sold for scrap. She'll sail home in March, but is likely to return to the Gulf next year. As a sunset falls over the Persian Gulf, night watch begins, and HMS Birmingham prepares to anchor off the coast of Dubai. The Lynx helicopter leaves for a routine evening patrol. The ceasefire has held out for another day, but the war is far from over. Stocking up for Christmas, Royal Navy style. A Sea King helicopter flies in festive supplies from a nearby support ship. But for the 300 men on board HMS Birmingham, Christmas is just another working day. No tinsel, no celebrations. The Type 42 destroyer will spend the 25th as Britain's duty warship in the Gulf, protecting merchant ships through the Middle East war zone. Despite a four-month-long ceasefire between Iran and Iraq, Birmingham will be on defence stations, ready to respond and, if necessary, retaliate with awesome firepower if British tankers come under attack. Christmas for us, we're calling day 25. Uh, it's another working day, it's a day on patrol. We will be relieved on duty uh, two days later and we'll go into a local port where we will have our official Christmas. But I'm sorry to say the 25th is a working day. If, sir, we are to the east of the marked line at 1400, sir, we can make Dubai for our RV at 1600. Right. What do you know about the merchant ship? He's coming down from Square Leg, is he? Yes, sir. He's transiting down from Square Leg, sir, expected in the vicinity of the Fatah oilfield very soon, sir. The Royal Fleet Auxiliary vessel Ulna sails the southern gulf, frequently supplying HMS Birmingham and the other two warships assigned to the Armilla patrol. This operation is called RAS, replenishment at sea. A gun line is fired, a fuel pipe hoisted across, and the filler begins. We're now taking on board 300 tonnes of fuel. Birmingham needs to refuel like this every four days. It's a highly dangerous operation which requires precision sailing. The strong currents between both ships means there's a very real risk of collision. Teenage sailors watch as the tanks are topped up. For many, this is their first Christmas at sea. Memories of home are swiftly taken out of sight below deck. The trees are locked in a storeroom. The instruction not to be opened before the 27th. in the galley. 300 demanding mouths will want turkey dinners, plus seasonal trimmings like strawberries and cream, steam puddings and brandy sauce. The cakes are baked, fresh supplies of marzipan are sorted. Preparations for a festive feast began in August, nearly two months before the ship sailed from Portsmouth. For Christmas Day, I'll have about 150 to 200 pounds of meat available, and uh, I'll be cooking up uh, with the captain's secretary something like 10 tons of gravy, sorry, 10 gallons of gravy, and about 8 gallons of custard, uh, 10 gallons of uh, brandy sauce. We've got our mince pies, 
I can't tell you whose they are, but they're homemade. And uh, a little tot of rum and a little tot of brandy here and there. The way I see it, you're the man who could cause a mutiny on board if the lads don't get what they want. Yes, I believe I'm only as good as my last meal, really. And the, the chefs are the same. My brothers, as Christmas tide approaches, let it be our care and our delight to hear again the message of the angels. Father Paul Donovan, the ship's chaplain, knows all about homesickness. Bethlehem. He's spending his Please, first Christmas at mystery, sea, having left his parish in Northamptonshire four years ago to join the Navy. Sailors, despite their sometime appearances, have a deep sense of God, particularly when they're away from home, and particularly when they're tense or worried. And when sailors are away from home for a long time, then they do get anxious about their families and their children. And the priest can often be the person they can come and speak to in confidence. So you're priest and agony uncle as well? A touch of that, yes. The Navy describes the chaplain as the friend and advisor of all on board. And I'm in a very privileged position because I have access to everyone in the ship and have no responsibilities which will detract from my priestly role. Homesickness is a terrible, terrible thing, you know. Nobody wants to show that underneath it all they're a bit of a softy, you know. I mean, all sailors are. They're the missing link between manhood and boyhood for a start, you know. And uh, it takes a lot of courage to actually pour your heart out to somebody else. Although once they start, that's it, you know, the whole lot comes out, you know. These prayers and praises let us humbly offer up to the throne of heaven in the words which Jesus himself gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. In the sweltering heat, the destroyer HMS Birmingham tears through the Strait of Hormuz, her guns ready to fire if British tankers are attacked. These are the Navy's men of war, many just youngsters missing their lovers and wives, mums and dads. Sailors like David Shepherd, who's spending his first Christmas at sea, 3,000 miles away from his family in Birmingham. I miss Father Christmas. I know we'll all miss him and his grandmother will, because she comes every Christmas. And how does Dad feel with son away in the Gulf? Well, I shall miss him as well. I don't suppose he expects me to say that, really, but uh, I shall miss him. Do you reckon he misses you? I suppose he does, really. I think he misses his girlfriend a bit more, but uh, yes, I, well, I hope he does. How do you think he's going to be reacting when he, when he sees you now? I think he'll be as shocked as I am, really. I, don't, I didn't really know anything about it. Hi, David. Have a great Christmas and a great birthday. And there's even a message from Nephew Thomas. Hello, Sailor. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas, Jackie. I'm missing you a lot. And hopefully I'll be back in April when it's your birthday. And I'll see you then. It's going to be a very quiet Christmas for Sylvia Fillimore and her mother in Swindon. One of her sons is in Hong Kong. The other, 19-year-old Paul, is an able seaman on HMS Birmingham. And behind every seaman is a boastful grandmother. I'm very proud of him. And I think he's done very well indeed. It was a very big surprise when he decided on the Navy, because he's such a quiet, reserved sort of boy. And I do believe it's done him the world of good. Hi, sailor. Bit of a surprise seeing Mum here. But I would like to wish you a Merry Christmas, Paul, as we are going to miss you this year. And I'd like to wish all your friends on Birmingham a Merry Christmas as well. Merry Christmas, Paul! Christmas is especially sad if you're spending it away from the woman you married just seven months ago. John Darby from Brown Hills near Warsaw is a marine engineering mechanic and his wife clearly believes embarrassment is the best cure for homesickness. Merry Christmas, Rabbit Bum. 
Everybody knows now what your new name is. Even your mum and dad have heard it, so I suppose I'll have to pay the consequences when you come home. <laughs> anyway, I'd just like to wish all on 3 PMS and everybody on HMS Birmingham a really Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year, and I hope you all have a really safe journey home. So here's to all you lot, and here's a cracker to pour for John. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. <laughs> wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And same to all my family and all my mates back home. And I'll be out drinking with you when I get back. Home for leading writer Steve Weems is Great Marvin in Worcestershire. Like many others on board, this is his first Christmas at sea. When he joined the Navy, when he said he wanted to go to sea, what, what was your reaction? I thought, great. <laughs> I did, actually, yeah. I thought, great. Hello, Steve. Everybody in Morgan sends their love. Uh, but a message from Mum causes a lump in the throat and the tears are difficult to hold back. No leg pulling now. There's a code of respect among the older ratings. They've all been through it before. Hope you have a nice time, Christmas, and we'll have a drink for you. Thanks. I've got one just there. Hard luck, mate. <laughs> Happy Christmas and New Year. See you when you come home. What did you think when you saw your mum and dad then? Uh, different, different. Dad had a drink again. Not unusual. Did uh, I see a tear in the eye? Yeah, it could have been, yeah. Very close. Very Say close. hello to them. Right. To the both of you, and that, Carol, Vince, all my mates, have a good Christmas, and I'm sorry I won't be there. Six weeks after getting engaged, 19-year-old Ian Hill sailed to the Gulf, bidding farewell to fiancé and family in Rugeley. What are you looking forward to most when, when he comes home? A great big hug and a kiss. <laughs> you are kidding. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, he always comes to me for his dinners. So there'll be homemade steak, oh, sure. Hello, Ian. I hope you're all right. And I do really oh, miss you. And I can't wait till you come back home. And I think you should write me some more letters, don't you? A yeah. few more. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you look... Ah, God, I feel so mad sitting here with all these cameramen peering at you. <laughs> 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 I think I should have stopped at work the rest of the day. <laughs> Three hundred sons, dads, husbands and lovers keeping the peace during the season of goodwill. They'll spend another three months patrolling the Persian Gulf, sailing home at full steam in the spring. Till that reunion, they remember their loved ones with a prayer. Heavenly Father, you showed your love to men by the birth of the Holy Child of Bethlehem. As Christmas approaches, help us to welcome him with gladness and to make room for him in our daily lives so that we may live in peace with one another and in goodwill with all your family of mankind. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.